Putin and his family lived in a tiny room without hot water. After becoming a KGB agent, he became an obsessive psychotic. How did Putin suddenly become president of Russia? Why did he attack Ukraine? What happened during the first invasion attempt? How did Putin, who had a dark past, suddenly influence the world? It all started in 2012. Russia entered Ukraine through Belarus, but it met with fierce resistance. Nevertheless, many Ukrainians fled the country to escape the negative effects of the war. Approximately 7.6 million people were forced to flee to various countries in Europe. It was the biggest refugee crisis Europe has ever experienced. Vladimir Putin, president of Russia, was born in St. Petersburg in 1952. His father worked as a laborer in a factory. He had lost two brothers after the German invasion. More than one million people died of starvation due to the war in his hometown. Putin, who had a very difficult childhood, saw hunger and death. This left deep scars on his psyche. In his youth, Putin watched spy movies. In fact, it was his greatest passion. Inspired by spy movies, he dreamed of becoming a KGB agent. After studying law at St. Petersburg State University, he managed to enter the KGB. His first job was to spy for the KGB in Germany. He fulfilled his mission successfully. His activities contributed to the collapse of socialist East Germany. When the Berlin Wall fell, Putin was still working as a KGB agent in Germany. He burned all his secret documents to prevent them from falling into German hands. At the time, the Soviet Union had disintegrated and was divided into 15 new regions. Putin could not digest this situation. In his eyes, the Russian Empire had lost 2 million square meters of territory. For Putin, this was the biggest geopolitical disaster of the century. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Yeltsin came to power. Yeltsin's government privatized many state-owned enterprises left over from the communist rule. The Russian economy was in deep decline. The sale of state-owned enterprises benefited the oligarchs, who were on the rise at the time, because many state-owned enterprises had fallen into the hands of a few rich oligarchs. After the collapse of the old big state, the new government had a hard time running the country, because nothing was the same as before. Yeltsin was cooperating with the West. This was unacceptable to many people. Yeltsin was also an alcoholic and preferred to spend his days drinking rather than running the state. The Russian people thought that Yeltsin was a puppet of the West. Yeltsin collaborated with the oligarchs in order to stay in power and virtually handed the state over to the oligarchs. While all this was going on, Putin ended his activities in Germany and returned to his country. He saw the state of the country and made a decision. He had to rid the government of this incompetent administration. He decided to enter politics. He was as successful in politics as in espionage. He received many promotions and managed to gain Yeltsin's trust. In 1999, unable to withstand the pressure, Yeltsin was forced to resign. This was a unique opportunity for Putin. Yeltsin had already proposed Putin as president. There was a strange situation. For some reason, Putin gained Yeltsin's trust in a very short time and became the head of the Russian state in a very short time. Maybe everything had been arranged. After all, the KGB was the darkest and dirtiest intelligence organization in the world. All kinds of dirty work was expected from this organization. The first thing Putin did when he became president was to divide Russia into seven regions. In the past, the rulers of many regions of Russia were elected by the people. Putin abolished this and started to elect the people who would be in the administration of the seven regions. Then Putin ended the rule of all the oligarchs he confiscated all their assets and expelled many of them from the country. Strangely enough, the Russian people, who were drifting towards a one-man regime, embraced and admired all of Putin's behavior. Putin brought back the old Soviet anthem and made it the official anthem of the state. This caused concern in many quarters, because many people were tired of the communist system and the one-man regime. Nevertheless, the Russian people continued to support Putin. When Putin took office, he landed on the oligarchs like an iron fist. Nothing was the same anymore. It became clear that those who supported Putin were rewarded and those who did not were forced to flee the country or die. Putin had now completely seized power. He completely subordinated Russian state television to him. Then all news centers were forced to broadcast Putin's propaganda. 
The country was slowly moving towards a one-man regime. The real danger was that those who seized power would never be satisfied with anything. History has shown us this many times. With power comes arrogance and greed, and Putin was nothing but the devil in the face of power. All the media was now emphasizing how powerful, charismatic, and popular Putin was. In order to show his power to the whole world, Putin created the Russian State Television Network. Broadcasting in many languages, it emphasized what a powerful and successful statesman Putin was. Like all dictators throughout history, Putin was spreading propaganda all over the world. Many of the reports about him even turned out to be lies. But no one was afraid to expose a Putin's true face. Except one person, Navaline, one of Putin's biggest opponents, was shouting out the truth about Putin. Since Putin became president, he has not had many rivals, both as a country and as an individual, except Navalin and Chechnya. After Putin became president, Chechens launched a series of attacks. These attacks reached as far as Moscow. Putin made a statement after these events and announced that he would completely destroy Chechnya. Indeed, after Putin's announcement, a large-scale operation was launched in Chechnya. Hundreds of thousands of people, including 80,000 civilians, lost their lives in the attacks. In less than one year, Russia took control of Chechnya. Oddly enough, Putin's approval rating was around 2% before the attack on Chechnya. After the attack on Chechnya, Putin's approval rating rose to 45%. The scary thing was that the bombings, which were said to be Chechen, were actually organized by Putin. Terrible allegations were circulating. Putin didn't care that thousands of innocent people died for power. Some in the army and the public were saying that the Moscow attack was Putin's doing. But the investigations silenced the voices. Now that Putin was in control of the whole country, it was time to go out into the world. Putin's dark plans were slowly coming to light. In 2008, Putin attacked Georgia, cutting all internet connections. The whole world was shocked. Despite messages of condemnation from all over the world, Putin annexed two important pieces of Georgian territory. Instead, he seized Crimea, which is part of Ukraine, and started building military bases there. Now, Putin had an obstacle like Turkey in front of him. He could not overcome this obstacle easily, because if he tried to attack Turkey, he would find all the states of the world against him. In order to achieve his goal, Putin had to take over the whole of Ukraine, but he could not do it all at once. After Ukraine's decision to join the European Union, Putin had the opportunity he wanted. Or did Putin plan this? After a referendum in Ukraine, the people had voted in favor of joining the European Union. Putin objected to this decision and invaded Ukraine. Before that, he intervened in the war in Syria and supported many ethnic groups in the country. Not content with this, Putin secretly supported all opposition candidates in Europe. His aim was to disrupt the established order in Europe and perhaps to conquer the whole of Europe. By secretly supporting the liberation parties in Hungary, Australia, and Italy, he was revealing his real intentions. He wanted to take over countries where freedom and democracy prevailed by creating unrest. At the same time, it wanted to consolidate its own rule. For this purpose, it was not content with silencing the opposition in the country. It also carried out and continues to carry out many activities to destroy democratic orders all over the world. The Russian people were tired of dictators and had seen the communist system at its most brutal. Just when they were about to relax, Putin, whom they trusted, turned out to be no different from the previous bloody leaders. Now, even though the Russian people are protesting against the invasion of Ukraine, they cannot do anything about it. In Russia, where all dissenting voices were silenced, history was repeating itself and the fate of the Russian people never changed. Now thousands of Russian soldiers are dying because of Putin's lust for power, and the Russian people cannot open up to the world. So what do you think about this? We would be glad if you express your thoughts in the comments section. If you want more of this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, press the like button, and follow our channel.